There is a Cleveland company which has sent its artistry throughout the United States for well over a century. Now, the products it manufactures are completed very quietly on Cleveland's west side, but make a big sound when they arrive and are in the hands of the customers. It's a story Leon Bibb handles in his continuing series, My Ohio. And it is quite a story, too, I should add. This is a story of a product we often hear, but probably never think much about, of how it's made. Well, come along with me and tune your ears, because I have sweet sounds for you. The pipe organ, its sound filling a church. An old organ, but still spry on its feet. Aging, but still musically full-voiced. As well, music here. Better said, music made here. This workman is as important to music as is the musician. This is an early entry point for the long roadway a pipe organ must take. Holt Camp Organs. Artists of a different sort set stage. Our story looks at both ends of the pipe organ. This is its beginning. Pipe organs aren't just all the same. Uh, they have, there's different builders, there's different ideas. Holtkamp Organs has been in Cleveland since 1902, when Chris Holtkamp's great-grandfather took over an organ manufacturing company. On the Cleveland west side, the slow process begins. In building an organ, Chris Holtkamp must think of what will be its role and the dimensions of its house. The job of this organ is to frame the window, right? Yeah. yeah. And this only has, oh, I bet that's... 2% of the pipes exposed. Molten lead and zinc, which will be poured, dried, and rolled into organ pipes. Manufacturing hands of Tim Casper are the same hands which play an organ in a Cleveland church. When you play your organ at church on Sundays, yes. do you often think about the hands that built that organ perhaps long before you were born? Well, uh, yes, and it's just amazing if you look at organs in other countries, in Europe in particular, how long they have lasted. Varying lengths of pipe, each one tuned differently, sing separate notes when air is forced through. Something similar to a whistle. The organ at Pilgrim Congregational Church in Cleveland was built in 1894. Nearly a century later, Holtkamp restored it. Interim pastor, Reverend Ellen Palmer Marcy, relishes the organ sound. Just emphasizes and undergirds the whole message that you're trying to get across in a service. Tim Robson learned the organ when he was 12. Like a Pied Piper, it calls him to its sound. You can always tell a Holtkamp organ by the look of its uh, key desk, its console. What's, your, what's in front of you right there? Right here, yes. It is music which began in this Cleveland shop, from the idea to the making. Metal and wood are married in a union designed to last for generations. If the church is standing 60 years from now, the organ will also be there, and you want to be very proud of what you built. Holtzkamp does not make the music, but is behind the music. A box of pipes, yes, but certainly much more than that. For those who will play this organ and already make music on other organs, they will tell you there is a lot more here than what you see. When you want to have that bringing glory to God sound, it's that richness, the fullness that helps to create that. So when an organist coaxes notes from the instrument, sending sound to the rafters, thank the musician. But he is not alone. There are the Holtzkamp organ hands, which made it, coaxing music from the materials which join the chorus. From my Ohio, this organ company sends such artistry throughout the country. Holt Camp Organs of Cleveland is a maker of the maker of music. Generally speaking, pipe organs can be made to fit in the space you have, and they can run anywhere, price-wise, from $150,000 to even a million dollars. Now that is a good piece of music. I'm Leon Bibb.